Good morning, everyone. Let us begin today with 714, 714. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is the King of glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promised of ages, the King of glory, comes the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In all of Galilee, in city or village, he goes among his people cure their illness. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, sift up your voices. And so we begin our celebration by blessing ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And coming into the Lord's presence, we ask for forgiveness and healing, especially for the times when we did not understand or did not want to understand what this Advent season, the Christmas season, is all about. Lord Jesus, you open the eyes of the blind. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you strengthen hearts that are frightened. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we who are weighed down from of old by slavery beneath the yoke of sin may be set free by the newness of the long-awaited nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord, our justice. Therefore, the days will come, says the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives who brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but rather, as the Lord lives who brought the descendants of the house of Israel up from the land of the north, and from all the lands to which I banished them. They shall again live on their own land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice, the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. 
justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds, and blessed forever be his glorious name. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. O leader of the house of Israel, giver of the law to Moses and Sinai, come to rescue us with your mighty power. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child to the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, When we watch a movie, we usually see something that either the writer or the director had put together and they presented to us. Sometimes other people become involved, but we see the end product. And sometimes it doesn't always make sense. And the example that I, that I use today is to remind us that even when it comes to Jesus, we have two different authors. We have today's Gospel, Matthew, who tells us about the beginning of Jesus' life and who was involved. And we have St. Luke, who practically takes the same story, but from the vantage point of Mary. And so what is Jesus presenting, uh, what is Matthew presenting us today? He tells us about Joseph who usually is the person that is sort of in the background of all of these things. But just because he isn't in the forefront doesn't mean that he's not important. His situation is as important as Mary's is, because both of them listen carefully to the Lord. And both of them were told what to do by God himself. 
Now, when we look at, we, we hear today, you know, that Joseph was a righteous person. And what that meant is he followed the law of Moses. He was a very religious person. He was a very virtuous person. Righteous. Most of the, when we look at that word, we think of self-righteous. And when we think of self-righteous, that means, oh, I'm better than you are. But that's not what the word means here today. It means that Joseph followed his conscience and he followed the word of God as he listened to the scriptures and what was presented to him in his faith. Now, one of the challenges, I think, that comes to Jesus is he is betrothed, which is different than, in our terms today, the engagement when somebody gives a ring. And to, to, to be betrothed meant, in that time, you were married. So Joseph is perplexed when suddenly he's being told that his wife has conceived. How would we feel when something like this comes? And Joseph says, it's not me. What do I do? And because of his righteousness, because he believed in God, God's presence in their lives, he wants to do the best for Mary. And so, and that was possible without making a big issue about it. He could have done so, divorced her. But then comes God entering his life. And God tells him what to do. When you think about the practical aspects of all of this, how would I, how would you respond to something that comes out of the blue without any explanation? But because Joseph was faithful to God in listening to the scriptures and the interpretation of the scriptures, he made the right decision. He said, Lord, your will be done. But we know, as we hear the story on Christmas Day of Mary from the Gospel of Luke, Mary has done the same thing. She too was perplexed. How could that be, she says. But we don't go into that story today. Some years ago, someone shared a story with me that I would like to share with you today. Hear me clearly, this is a dream. And the dream is explained by Mary to Joseph. She says, I had a dream, Joseph. I don't understand it. Not really. But I think it was about a birthday celebration for our son. I think that what, that was what, that what it was, what it was all about, is about our son. The people had been preparing for it for about six weeks. They had decorated the house and bought new clothing. They had gone shopping many times and bought elaborate gifts. It was peculiar because the presents weren't for our son. They were wrapped them in beautiful paper and tied them with lovely bows and stack them under a tree. Yes, a tree, Joseph, right in their own house. They had decorated the tree also. The branches were full of glowing balls and sparkling ornaments. There was a figure on top of the tree. It looked like an angel might look. Oh, it was beautiful. Everybody was laughing and was enjoying themselves. They were all excited about the gifts. They gave the gifts to each other, Joseph, not to our son. I don't think they even knew him. They never mentioned his name. Doesn't it seem odd for people to go all to that trouble to celebrate someone's birthday if they don't even know him? I had the strangest feeling that if our son had gone to this celebration, he would have been intruding. Everything was so beautiful, Joseph, 
and everybody was so happy, but it made me want to cry. How sad for Jesus, not to be wondered at his own birthday party. I'm glad it was only a dream. How terrible, Joseph, if it had been real. Does it speak to our situation today? How many people even associate the celebration of Christmas with Jesus? It's all about us, isn't it? And there are wonderful aspects to it. But we all fall into that trap. And maybe today we need to think about and say, you know, what is the gift that I and you bring to Jesus? How do we celebrate Christmas? What references do we make in our families and in our communities to Jesus, the Son of God, who came into our world to identify with us and show us by his life how God loves us? Isn't it interesting how far off sometimes we can become when we only think about ourselves or the economy and how much money is going to be made and all of those things. And I like that statement about how many, what do we know about Jesus? How do we search and try to listen and find out what is God's presence in our lives? And how do we respond? And what is God asking us to do and to become? This is in no way to make our conscience feel guilty. But it's a reminder that sometimes something can be so far out of place. And we don't even know why we're doing it. And I think we come together because we are reminded of that unbelievable moment in the history of humankind when God, our Creator, took it upon himself to identify and to become one with us, and he came as a child, just as you and I came into this world, totally dependent on his parents and the relatives and friends who grew up and who told us about how much God loves us. And he gives us the reason why he came, to forgive our sins, to let us know the greatest gift of all that God has for each of us, and that is that God loves us. So as we again get closer to that birthday, let's at least make some effort of saying why we celebrate this gift, why we celebrate this feast day. Because as St. Therese so beautifully said, Christmas is not about me, it is about Jesus. And you and I can do no better than that. And so today we praise our God who brings sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf. And we humbly offer our prayers. We pray today for the people of God, each and every one of us, whom God has saved and whom God loves unconditionally, that we extend that same gift to each other and to all we meet. For this we pray to the Lord for government leaders, for judges and legislators, and especially for our country that's going through some difficult times, that we remember what is important and what is not, and that we reflect in our lives 
the honesty and the truth of a Joseph, and the willingness and total giving of Mary to the Lord by saying, Amen, so be it. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are there to help the sick and provide service and love and caring for all families who do that, so that we continue to remember that God is the healer that brings wholeness back into our lives. For this we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who have asked for our prayers, for our own special needs, and in the silence of our heart, let us mention them now. And for all of these intentions, let us pray to the Lord. And we pray also for all the members of the Little Flower Society and for all the people who have sent in their petitions to the Little Flower so that through the intercession of St. Therese, God will answer our needs. For this we pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, help us to understand the meaning of your coming into our lives. And by saying yes, as Mary and Joseph did, you come into our hearts and make your home in each of us. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory collection that we take up is for the upkeep of the shrine, and we thank you for your generosity. And then let us also, at this point, turn to page 38, and we will sing the second verse. to the O Israel. And now my sisters and brothers, let us pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice to be offered to you, O Lord, make us acceptable to your name, that we may merit for all eternity to be the companions of Christ, by whose death our own mortality was healed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we say to him of your glory as without end be acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, 
the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come. In your glory, Lord, we remember, we celebrate, we believe. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. And let us take this moment to remember them by name. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our faithful spouse, Saint Therese, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Thank you. And now let us reach out and share the peace of Christ with each other.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter onto my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
His name will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Let us pray. May we receive your mercy in the midst of your temple, O Lord, and show fitting honor to the coming solemnities of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. And let us greet Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Therese. Just want to mention to you next Tuesday, which is Christmas Eve, there will be no Mass here on that day. Most of the parishes have three or four Masses, and so uh, there will not be Mass that day. And uh, I wish you all a very blessed and joyful Christmas. And remember today, where does God fit into our lives? What do I bring to the Lord? I think what he really wants is our hearts. God bless.